yeah, happy Sunday. Um, actually, before going to bed yesterday, I uh, I said I'll wake up at seven, and I did. I woke up at seven, so that's progress. Um, the difference is I actually didn't just say it to myself. I convinced myself with with uh, a dash, a good solid dash of uh, the notion of belief in my word. It's very important to regain that trust in your own words, in your own head. Uh, because so often, you know, like I plan things out in my head and they don't come to fruition. And I think a lot of times what has caused a lot of uh, quote unquote suffering is, you know, you plan all these perfect ideas, business ideas, trip ideas. Um, friendship ideas, whatever, you know, ideas are, there's so many ideas, you can just sit down, write a whole book about ideas, but what good are the ideas if there's no actions behind them? So, you know, it, it, the mind is timeless, it doesn't, it doesn't know that this body is going to expire, that the time is not on your side, and so on and so forth. So, it's very important to develop The power of your word. That's that's really the uh, the programming language of this reality is your word. Just like how you program uh, websites, you know, HTML and all that shit. It's the same thing for this reality with words. But before those words can come into reality, one has to be really um, diligent and careful about the words that they utter uh, specifically in the out reality uh, but more importantly uh, because I think that's where it starts is in your head um, if you're saying that you're gonna wake up at 7 gotta get up at 7 that's how you get your trust in your in your word back um, so all past week I've been trying to wake up at 6 and I haven't been able to so on a Sunday Actually, yesterday I drove uh, and I got like 150 bucks on Lyft, uh, and then I uh, I got invited to a bunch of parties. So Sunday's supposed to be still a Sunday, so I was invited over to uh, cover um, an event in Long Beach, by the way. So that's awesome. It's kind of in line of uh, what I'm all about, by the way. Moon, amazing moon. Blah, 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 blah. So I'm excited to, uh, to, to capture this event. It happens, I think, monthly. Uh, and it's pretty cool because it falls on Sunday, uh, Sunday fun day. So uh, get loose a little bit uh, crazy maybe before, uh, before conquering Monday's Zen meditation at seven o'clock. All right, so this is a uh, <clears throat> weekly summary of the experiment, reflections. So the social experiment uh, is basically documenting myself. Uh, well, I guess the social experiment is becoming your own guru in a sense that, in a sense that I think at, at a certain point you hit a wall of listening and digesting mentally the the teachings of uh, various you know people of various backgrounds and this comes from the experience of academia uh, you know I have uh, several degrees and t to a certain extent none of those degrees really matter until un until you act upon them until you act upon those the knowledge you know knowledge is in power organized knowledge is power uh, that's Napoleon Hill from Think and Grow Rich. Um, so it is very important to not just use your knowledge, it's very important to organize it. Organize it, but organization often has to be personalized, has to come from you. Um, so it's very important to precisely, uh, for me, I believe, is to document, to document um, the the process of 
becoming disciplined. I think the discipline uh, discipline creates path for practice. You can't just practice haphazardly, right? Uh, so discipline is very, very it's very important in a, in a way that it creates a path, like I said, and becomes almost like the uh, the bookends, the book holders. Of, of whatever the discipline that you, I mean, whatever whatever organized knowledge or organized, um, yeah, organized knowledge. Uh, because everybody at a certain point scoops up as much knowledge as they can and uh, at, thereafter uh, they, 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 they cap out and they start using it. So <clears throat> to this degree, I, I realized that I need to put it into use, but discipline has been something that's very difficult for me. So I decided to create a uh, social experiment and act upon uh, a lot of uh, teachings of various backgrounds, including psychocybernetics. What is psychocybernetics? Well, psychocybernetics is. Um, Working with your own self-image, creating self-image, managing your self-image. Self-image is what gives us our mental mirror of who we are. We can stand in front of the mirror and um, that's going to give us a reflection of the physical reality that we are occupying. But your self-image is the mirror of your ego reality that you're occupying. So in order to be happy with who you are, uh, you got to fit your perfect and ideal self-image. And um, th th this guy, psycho author, Maxwell something, don't remember, uh, bad with names. Um, I'm good with names, I just don't remember them. <laughs> See, I'm trying to be positive. Um, so he's a plastic surgeon who uh, figured that after producing, uh, after after conducting plastic surgery, he often noticed that some of his patients were still unhappy, and that unhappiness came from their internal uh, mirror image of self. So that's where he started, kind of uh, before operating on anyone who didn't need it for uh, other than cosmological needs. He would actually start practicing his psychocybernetics on them, and he would. Um, kind of say, l listen, you know, for example, maybe you don't want to be younger. In one of his examples, the, this patient came in and he thought that he wanted to be younger. Uh, but he said, you know what? Maybe it's not so much that you want to be younger, is that maybe you want to enjoy the things that you enjoyed when you were younger. So why not and go enjoy them with your son? See, he was a family man. And he, he was rich, but he was always busy. Um, so he was depressed, basically. And he's like, hey, you know, maybe I should be younger or something. So what Maxwell did is he uh, redirected his focus and, and gave him an opportunity to kind of see his, change his reality in such a way that it gave him a different reflection of his inner image. Uh, he asked him that he'll operate if he would commit to conducting you know, activity with your son every day for 21 days. And that's exactly what it takes to change your behavior, usually 21 days. So, uh, and he came back and said, listen, I don't, I don't, you know, my life has changed completely. I don't need, I feel younger and I, I, I look younger and I don't need the surgery. So that's the power of psychosarbonetics. So, uh, one of my things is obviously, uh, well, I guess not obviously, but uh, God, I have a, like I've said before, I've, I've, I've gone around and I've scooped up knowledge left and right from various angles and various things. And I'm just kind of like tapped out at this point, trying to put it all together. And this is where Maxwell's uh, work on psycho cybernetics really had hit me in, in uh, I guess, hit me, hit, hit me in the engine. And, and I really had discovered the drive in me to work on my self-image. 
So part of the experiment is the growth, but in the, because I needed a reflection, my, my reality had to change and I'm all about transparency in a way that, you know, if we're, if we're truly going to have people who are trying to make a difference here, we, we ought to have that be transparent in a such a way that other people can also be inspired or people can even, you know, um, uh, kind of follow by example and in a way be inspired uh, because inspiration is usually the, the fuel for, for movement. So, um, you know, going back to Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, uh, it's very important to um, to recognize that the starting point of all the riches, and we're not talking about money here, we're just talking about riches. Um, so, I mean, even even just environment, the universe, the, the, the nature, the health of our community that we, we are presently find ourselves in, that's, that's the richness. And in order to be rich uh, in all aspects, the starting point of all the riches is desire. So desire is an interesting um, feeling. It's a very powerful feeling. And unless you know how to channel and navigate it, um, I think it can be dangerous in a way that because it's such a powerful emotion and feeling that it demands an outlet rather fast specifically because we live in such a gratifying uh, you know express gratification society that that this desire is a very powerful feeling and is being confused for anxiety it's being confused for you know d depression <clears throat> because i think depression actually comes from depressing that feeling so, uh, so so instead of you know that's one of ways of dealing with it because it's a very uncomfortable feeling because it we, we're not exercising patience we're not exercising transmutation that Napoleon Hill talks about uh, in in his uh, Think and Grow Rich which is an amazing book I, I highly recommend it that's the uh, uh, of course the study of successful people that he dedicated 25 years of his life uh, under the uh, funding of Dale Carnegie I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, in a sense, <clears throat> these are the things that I think that I've realized this week while doing this experiment. So, the experiment is basically conducting quick snaps of just being responsible. So, for example, you know, I, I, the theme of last week was getting up at six o'clock in the morning, and actually today I've achieved saying before I go to bed, saying, look, I'm going to get up at 7. Today I'm going to, and this is, this is Sunday. So today I'm going to get up at 7. And you know what? I got up at 7. I wanted to roll back, but instead of rolling back to sleep, at least I stayed up. But guilt discharged, I went online on my phone. But I still feel victorious more so than just going and snoozing for 20 minutes. Because I was actually up. So I've, had um, um, given power back to my word, which is very important. These are the uh, part of the four agreements uh, that uh, Don Mel Ruggies or something like that talks about in his book of four agreements. Is uh, be impeccable with your word is number one, and that's very important. Being impeccable with your word uh, outside is is one thing, and. Uh, once you start being impeccable with your word outside, when you m utter it, um, I think you grow an awareness of how important the words are because now you're not making false promises. Now you're not making um, quick judgments, <clears throat> so on and so forth. Even in your conversations, you avoid the conversations about people, you know, talking bad about people, even if it's uh, 
you know, stupid issue or hot issue that's like, for example, for, for me, um, I have an issue on Facebook that I would just kind of like jump on and um, if, if there's news that talks about this issue, I share it right away. So lately that, you know, I've been minimizing that because even written word is very important because um, it's not so much about how people will perceive you, it's about the inner voice that you give uh, a channel of expression to. And the more you give this channel of expression to that particular side of you, the more that side of you occupies your ego and occupies your mind in reality, of course, because that in the moment that you are in that thought of that inner voice about in, you know, an issue of whatever it is, I'm certain that you can relate to it, uh, that this inner voice occupies most of your time, or at least the time of whatever that you're reacting to. So you're giving it time. That's the important thing, you're giving it time, you make it more real. And the more you give it time, the more real it is, and the less time that you have to, to concentrate and to focus on things that are important to you at a present moment, in the now. So this is why it's so important to live in the now. <clears throat> because otherwise we're giving voice to our victim selves, or our, our childhood selves. Um, so it's important to watch the, the amount of time you give a spotlight to your inner voice. What is that inner voice? Compartment, com, com, it's, not, it's not you all the time, right? There's... So I think we've explored an interesting concept of uh, kind of having a, uh, uh, different sides to who you are, different characters, if you will, because, you know, Shakespeare said, um, you know, life is just like a play, you know, everybody's a character. So it's important to recognize who are you as a character. And you can shape that character based on the realization of psycho-cybernetics. So I, at, the, at the end of the day, the best way I can describe what is psycho-cybernetics, it is your user manual to your ego. What is your ego? It's the center point of your character, of who you are, who you perceive yourself to be. That's your character. If you're not comfortable with your character, you'll come off awkward. If you're not comfortable with your character, you will be insecure. If you're not comfortable with your, I mean, the list can go on. That is why it's important to be comfortable with who you perceive yourself to be. That's where confidence comes from that's where separating yourself from mistakes come from realizing that you make mistakes so you're not a mistake you, you you're not a mistake at any point of your life you simply make mistakes I mean remember yourself as a baby right you're you you've got up and you fell down that usually happens before we even know anything about words had we known about anything about words, I bet we would not be getting up as quickly as we did, or as we do, rather. Um, so I think that's very important to uh, to understand that self-image can be shaped, and for the accountability, this. Uh, This documentation is performed in such a way that I can play it. The reason why I'm doing this is because I don't want to sit there and write. Uh, I, can, I can definitely write all this stuff out, but it's probably much easier for me to sit here and document it. And it's basically a note to myself, even if it's uh, myself a year from now or two years from now. Um, whatever, I think it's, it's nice to leave these kind of, uh, uh, notes to yourself, I suppose. I mean, we leave notes to ourselves every time, right? I mean, we do it in diaries and so on and so forth. Uh, 
I guess I'm insecure about coming off as if I'm trying to... Uh, I mean, I guess I don't mind sharing it, but by no means am I intending on doing anything. I haven't thought this through is what I'm saying. <laughs> I haven't thought this through, but I just thought that sharing this and uh, putting it out there as a transparency tool is a very good idea for me because it'll make me more responsible to the things that I talk about, to the intentions that I talk about in changing and changing myself so that I can change so I can change the environment around me. Even if it's just for my perception. Even if I can just do that, I can operate from a different level of existence. And only from operating at a different level of existence can I can I be be of help. It's like, you know, getting out of the burning plane, you know, you gotta help yourself. So anyway. This is me trying to help myself. Accountability to my own self image. And this is as best of a mirror as as it can be. <laughs>